So I'm back at the school again. As you can see, it's falling apart really. So we're just checking out one or two things. So this is the key. Oh. No water? No, no water. So don't get in there. So we're in the chemistry lab at the moment, at the school that I've been to previously. Um, the, it's a, it's, a, it's an uh, unfit state. Look, the taps don't even turn, no water is coming out. The whiteboards are very, very old. I mean, how can students learn in this environment? Exactly. So this is the, the lab itself. So here we have, um, some of the chemicals themselves or the reagents i think that's what they used to be called that takes me way back but look look at the walls these are the conditions that the children are having to learn in and parents are paying for this so we would really really would appeal to people to maybe sponsor a child sponsor a term maybe assist with getting piped water here they can assist with anything anything that is all necessary remember when you were doing chemistry at school you had bunsen burners you had pipettes you had the glass slides where you could do all of these things this is you know the children are not ungrateful they're very very appreciative and their parents work very very hard to send them here because it's a fee paying school and it's a good quality fee paying school they come out with good exam results and they do very very well however just think, would you want your child to learn in an environment like this alone with no appropriate provisions? So it ends up being that they learn everything by rote. And yes, that's one way of learning, but when you can see it in a practical environment and actually put your hands on the various chemicals and see the interactions and the reactions of the chemicals, that will help those children have a greater understanding of what they are learning and in that respect it, they will be able to retain that information and go on to re-deliver that when it comes to exam time. And again the principal was saying that the children don't even have an appropriate hall where they can keep a, um, you know we used to call them assemblies at school, I don't know what they call them in schools these days, but they don't even have anywhere where they can um, sit their exams appropriately. So it's very, very difficult. So we just encourage people to, you know, sponsor a child, to donate, to anything that you can do it would be greatly and vastly and widely appreciated. The information will be in the description box. Um, the school is SOS, um, her minor, the one that I mentioned before, and it's on the It's at Bakoti Hermina Drive, the school. It's the same school that's in the previous vlog. So I am now in the chemistry stroke biology lab. Look, this is, look at it. This is what they're using to learn the anatomy and the physiology, the bones, the cords, how things work, how things move in, in um, the body. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm sorry, I hate to say that it is terrible and I'm not being critical I'm being practical we try to be solution focused not just looking at the problems but looking about how we can change the narrative and get because children they are the future and Africa is the future and the young children in Africa are going to be the future so let's equip them let's equip them with the appropriate things that they need to learn their lessons this is the lab this is where the teachers have to teach. Again, they're learning by rote. They're learning on the board. And I'm not saying that board work isn't relevant, but it would be relevant if they had some other aids. Look. We need to do better. We need to do better for our children. We need to do better. We would not accept this in the countries that we originate from for our children. So let's try it. I implore you to donate what you can. You know, come with some practical solutions. Don't be in the description, in the comments section, making silly comments. Um, be there to 
be there to do something for our fellow students and pupils that are coming up in the world because they are going to be the future. Those are the ones that will be looking after us when we project ourselves forward in time when we are much older. So as I always say, Cairo, peace out. <laughs>